Hi guys, welcome to another F1 2020 video. One of the most frequently asked questions I get is how do I convert a dry setup into a decent wet setup? This often comes up after someone jumps into a race weekend, perfects their dry setup throughout practice, and then sees the dreaded rain cloud icon during the race session. When this happens, you could go and grab a completely new wet setup, but if you spent a lot of time working on your own dry setup, you may not want to undo all of that hard work. Well, what if I told you you could convert your existing dry setup with just a few simple tweaks? That way, you could keep the car setup that you like, one which handles just how you want it to, and evolve it into a wet setup. Well, in this video, I'll run through the exact changes you should make to turn any dry setup into a wet setup. Before I jump into those exact changes, I'll first run through the main elements that come together to create a wet setup. Hopefully, this will give you a good understanding of what each setup option does and give you the tools to adjust certain options to achieve your desired result. Of course, if you just want to jump straight into the exact changes that you need to make, I'll leave a timestamp in the description below. So, jumping straight in. The main areas you should focus on when setting up your car for wet weather in F1 2020 are higher downforce for both front and rear aero. If you run your usual dry aero setup in the rain, you'll find yourself understeering into corners as your car simply won't have the downforce required to turn in. You'll also struggle on corner exit as you won't have the required rear downforce to push your tyres into the road, giving you the traction that you need. You'll want to lower your on-throttle diff. As a general rule of thumb, you'll want your on-throttle diff set to its lowest setting in the rain. This is one of the main contributors to how fast your rear wheels will lose traction when accelerating. Next up, go with a softer suspension setup. By softening your suspension, you achieve a few objectives. Your car will be more gentle under heavy inputs, meaning your car is much less likely to snap on you under heavy cornering, braking or acceleration. It will also slow your suspension rebound speed, which will allow you to drive over bumps and curbs more aggressively without consequence. This will generally give your car, which is just much more forgiving to drive. You also want a much higher ride height. When the heavens open and the rain starts pouring down, the water sits on top of the track. This decreases the size of the gap from the bottom of your car to the track or water surface. If this gap gets too low, your car will start to skid over the water. This will also start to lift your tyres off the track and cause a sensation called aquaplaning. When your car aquaplanes, you lose all turning or braking control, meaning you are highly susceptible to losing control of your car. To avoid this, we simply raise the height of the car to ensure we have good ground clearance. Then, you'll want to lower your brake pressure. When it comes to braking in wet conditions in F1 2020, the harder you brake, the more likely you are to lock a wheel. Because grip is vastly lower in wet conditions, the risk of locking a wheel under braking increases dramatically. To counteract this, we always lower the brake pressure. By doing so, we are ensuring that even when we slam the brake pedal down, the ultimate braking force is lower, meaning we are lowering the risk of locking a wheel. The final part of our setup that we adjust for wet conditions is to lower the tyre pressures. Lowering the tyre pressures ultimately means that more of the tyre is in contact with the track surface at any point. Ensuring that we have as much tyre surface touching the asphalt is important to giving us the most amount of grip. So those are the key areas which go into making a wet setup. But what exactly should you change and by how much? Well, let's take a quick look at the exact options that we adjust to create a baseline wet setup. These adjustments won't always create a perfectly optimised wet setup in all cases. They will give you a great base wet setup while keeping the characteristics of your existing dry setup. So, I'll pull up our dry race setup for Australia alongside our wet setup for the same track, and I'll run through the changes and differences between the two. We always start our conversion by increasing the aero. We generally increase both front and rear aero by two points. This will help the front end grip, reducing tyre lockups and understeer, while the added rear downforce will help with traction on corner exit. Then, we lower the on throttle differential to 50% in all cases. And if your off throttle diff is set above about 70%, lower it down to 65% as a maximum value. Next up, we tend to lower our rear camber by one point, as this will tilt our rear tyres slightly less, giving us a larger tyre contact patch. Moving on, we always soften our suspension, both front and rear, generally by one or two points. If your dry setup suspension is above about five, lower it by two points. Otherwise, just bring it down by one. This applies to both front and rear suspension. We generally don't go below about three on the rear suspension, so if it's already set to that for your dry setup, keep it the same for the wet setup. Then, if you're running stiff rear anti-roll bars above about eight, lower it by one point. Then crank up the ride height by about five points. This will ensure we have good ground clearance, which is oh so important in the rain. 
Then we go on to lower our brake pressure to 90% maximum and we move our brake bias more rearwards to take pressure away from the front axle. We tend to set a maximum brake bias of about 52% in the rain. Finally, always lower your tyre pressures. Lower your fronts by one or two points and your rears by at least two points, if not three. As mentioned, these changes won't always give you the most optimised setup, but they will give you a really decent, drivable, wet race setup. These changes are for the wet preset, where you'll be driving on inters. If you need a full wet setup for the heaviest rain conditions, the main thing you should adjust is bump up your ride height by an additional two points and give yourself an extra click of front and rear downforce. So hopefully this video has helped you out and given you the tools you need to turn any dry setup into a wet race setup. If it has, give this video a like and as always, subscribe to our channel for more F1 2020 and sim racing content. See you on track guys.